we get out and I can immediately smell it. Not just any it, the it of all it's in my world. My favorite Korean street snack. Busan. It's early in the morning and it's thunderstorming outside. So I had no idea what to expect except for the fact that I anticipated amazing seafood, beautiful scenery, and um, just being in a place that I was aching to go. Boy, itinerary would help because... Not English friendly. Huh? Not English friendly at all. Which is really awesome if you have time to wander around, but not English friendly. Busan is not even remotely English friendly. We got on the train in the Seoul, we went to the Seoul train station. Oh yeah. We ate at this amazing booth. It was so good. I had ramyeon because that's the life I live sometimes. When we get on the train and it's a nice two and a half, maybe three-ish hour ride there. And we stroll into Busan and I can smell the ocean and just see the change in the atmosphere and everything. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm really here. We get off the train and it's fine people everywhere. Everywhere, y'all. Now, okay, let me... The K-pop side of me, the K-pop side of me, absolutely has an affinity towards leaders, rappers, and apparently people from Busan. I do not plan that. It's not even intentional. I gravitate towards those type of people. I don't know why. Somebody should, somebody should have told me that I was going to get off of the train and it was going to be that many fine ass people all over the place. Military men, beautiful women. It was overwhelming. Everyone looked so attractive and not plastic surgery attractive. They just genuinely looked good. I'm going up to one of the booths, uh, the ticket booth to try to get some information. I'm speaking an extremely broken Korean. The gentleman is speaking an extremely broken English with me, trying to figure out how we can get to the main Buddhist temple that's there because Patrick uh, practices Buddhism. So we definitely didn't want to take away from that moment for him. Plus it would just be something amazing to see. I'm a Christian, non-denominational, and Alita is Catholic. So there was a lot for all of us to experience there, both from a spiritual and religious standpoint. And plus, I know around the Buddhist temples, there's some good food. <laughs> so it was like a good two for one. We get on a bus and we start heading into what we hope is the appropriate direction. This was right before I walked up to a young man at the bus stop and asked him if he could speak English and he looked at me like, holy crap, no. <sighs> so we're on the bus hoping we're following the directions appropriately. I've barely got a signal down in this area of South Korea. We finally get off and randomly walk around in an area that we thought would kind of get us close to the temple. Didn't work out. Couldn't quite flag down a taxi. It was getting a little hard. Eventually, we did grab a taxi. And he was bilingual. Thank God. Thank God he was bilingual, God. The reason I flipped out like that, you'll have to look at the video. Just click the link up there. This is a story time that happened well before these stories happened of why bilingualism is so important to me in South Korea. He eventually gets us to the temple. We pull up. There's tour buses. There's cars. There's people. And it's just amaze balls. We get out and I can immediately smell it. Not just any it, the it of all it's in my world. My favorite Korean street snack in the entire world is Hoto. It's basically these little pancakes and they've got nuts in them and cinnamon and I'm literally kicking my feet right now. Oh my God. We walk up to a vendor and she's making fresh Hoto right at that moment. Oh my God, y'all, if you could come into my mind's eye and just see how vivid it is in my mind. Let me do the best that I can to describe it for you. Imagine walking up a concrete road. It's at a sloping angle. You see the ocean off in the distance in front of you. You've got 
these boots to the side of you and immediately to your right hand side in front of you is a little red tent with the older Korean lady in it and you can hear the grease popping from her making the little pancakes. You walk over and it's a fresh amount of them already on display and she's currently flipping them. You can smell the flour, you can smell the cinnamon and the nuts that are actually being toasted from the hot grease. It is everything, everything. And I walk up to her and I ask how much they are just to verify what's on the sign because you can haggle to an extent. And she tells me what it is, it's a really good price and Patrick buys them for us and I grab mine and I bite into it and it's just the most rich and toasty and buttery taste ever and it was so good and it was extra good because it was from Busan. I can only get them in Dallas, well I used to only be able to get them in Dallas, Texas and the vendor that used to make them has stopped. And luckily there's one here in Metro Houston that still does it, but it'll never taste like Dallas and Dallas will most certainly never taste just like the one in Busan. We went around the temple and walked a lot of stairs, saw a lot of amazing uh, artistry, just the, the way that everything was developed, the way that the, uh, the spiritual symbolism was everywhere. It was incredible. There too. Be careful There's it. squid. Uh, it's turbo actually. It's big. Okay, so there's a bug on my banchan. I don't quite know what it is, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So it's roasted. It's smoky, grainy. Slightly offended. Slightly offended by 